can we just all for the record say that he was actually a douchebag? Ooh, that's a hot mug guy. Hi guys, this is my review for Chris Angel's The Douchebag, episode 12 of Supernatural Season 4. Once again, kind of doing a filler episode instead of doing a story-based episode, which is taking a little bit of the gusto out of this season, considering the last 10 have been very heavily story-orientated. There are some story elements in this episode, very light-heartedly, and essentially the actual crux of the conversation debate between the brothers is completely invalid <laughs> considering how we know how the show ends. The main crux of this episode, while taking on a bunch of old has-been magicians who all of a sudden seem to have some good luck happening to them, one in particular being Jay, but people are dying in mysterious ways similar to that of the stunts that he's doing. The brothers are talking about how they think they're going to end. Sam actually says, do you think we're ever going to finish this? Do you think this will be our lives or do you think we'll be able to retire? And Dean's like, no, this is going to end bloody and sad. And I was like, okay, you know, I, he's not wrong. It's what happened. But at the end of the episode, after they've taken everyone down and they've kind of resolved everything, even though it's not really resolved because it's not a happy ending, Sam gets into the car with Ruby because he wants to try and do his training again. And he's doing it because he says, I don't want to do this when I'm an old man anymore. And he's not really wrong with that either, because as we know, after season five, the whole demon power thing just kind of gets dropped in its entirety. Maybe they might explain a little bit better because I'm not entirely sure of it. Don't, don't spoil it for me. Uh, I'm going to remember that myself when we get into season six. Otherwise though, this episode isn't a bad episode. I do like how it's taking a giant rip on Chris Angel, who at the time when this episode came out, he was still big hot shit with his television show, uh, Mind Freak. My brother would watch it and I hated it. I would rip that show up. Part. This is clearly staged. I remember there was one trick where he did where he was inside a bus or something or a van and he threw the card against the window and somehow the card was on the outside of the window but the, the next cut is everyone outside and Chris like, ah, oh, I'm take, I'm getting out of the bus for the first time. Oh my god, this is so staged. Anyways, the episode itself is talking about kind of has-beens, uh, has-been magicians who have been outshone by people who are more theatrical more Chris Angel douchebaggery kind of idea. Jay, for instance, is just so much in this depth of sorrow, this depth of depression of being has been, that he's just like, you know what, I'm gonna try the table of death. I'm clearly gonna die, but at least I'll go out with a bang, but then another person dies in his stead. And instead of really taking notice of it, he's enjoying the, um, the attention and the fame and the reliving of previous highs again. But the brothers come and they find that there is something more at stake here. There is some dark magic going on and eventually they take down who they think is the magician, which is like a little bit of a twist and tell. And the episode ends with Jay just being kind of depressed. It's like, I gave up my own friend. I've lost my other friend. I am all alone now because I did the right thing. And I like that part. That's probably one of the best parts of the episode because it ends on an incredibly negative note but otherwise this is kind of just a standard episode it's got some funny bits in it but really it's it's a whatever so in the end i will be giving chris angel is a douchebag a four out of seven it's not badly put together but it's not a standout episode aside from the very obnoxious title of it and like before i ask you guys what you thought about this episode so let's read those comments off now chris angel is a douche although true also, not a great episode. Honestly, I don't remember a thing about it. They can't all be winners. Bring on the later episodes of this season. The Magician Chris Angel uh, episode proves Andrew Dabb was a genius. He saw Chuck messing with the boys from the get-go with the Parallel Brothers stuff and gets a call back in season 15 with the Werewolf Brothers. Chuck loves parallels and seeing the boys react to it. So you wrong, Jeremy. Chuck being the villain from, was there from the start. Andrew Dab for Writer of the Year. <laughs> In all seriousness, I like this episode because it shows how easily magic was accessible to people, which makes it all the more jarring that Supernatural is remained hidden. I like the parallels between the boys and the other type of bond, foreshadowing perhaps what Dean was told to do to Sam by his father. But beyond that, I found this episode okay, not too exciting or eventful, 3 out of 7. Yeah, uh, the magician's relationship is definitely kind of a parallel, especially the fact that they all disband as friends afterwards. It's 
It's kind of foreboding. Oh, I'm so tired. I hope you enjoy this episode more than the last episode. Old age is a crucial theme in this episode. The Curious Case of Dean Winchester, Season 5, and Into the Mystic, Season 11. Out of the three, I think The Curious Case of Dean Winchester is the best. For some in inexplicable reason, the villain in this episode makes me re remember... Andre Toulon of the Puppet Master movies. I've never seen them, but yeah, I do actually really do like The Curious Case of Dean Winchester. I'm looking forward to that one. This episode really hits hard when Dean compares fighting evil to the creature Hydra and hopes to die when he's young and not too old. It's honestly one of my defenses why Dean needed to die in the series finale uh, on an ordinary hunt. The BDSM scene is hilarious. The makeup did reasonably well and the casting of the magicians was great too. The ending where Jay tells the waitress to throw away his magic cards is saddening to me every time. This episode clearly is a foreshadowing to how Sam and Dean will lose complete trust in one another by the end of season 4, 4-7. to seven. Yes, again, good parallels and I like how sad the ending is even if it is kind of ooh. Sam and Ruby's relationship seems similar. I'm not going to try and say that, I'm going to mess it up totally. To Samson and Delilah from the biblical book of Judges. A temptress, Ruby, Delilah, manipulating the hero Samson into being delivered to his enemy, Lucifer, the Philistines. The hero seems to be finally bested by his enemy, only to then regain control and sacrifice himself. Sam's sacrifice will allow him to defeat Lucifer, whereas Samson's death would kill all of the rulers of an entire government of Philistine. This comparison could be a reach. <laughs> yes and no, it's not a bad reach though, honestly, actually. Please don't watch Mannequin 3 The Reckoning. That episode literally uh, has 42 minutes of precious life that you could have used on something else important. You're doing yourself a favor. Honestly, I don't even remember what this episode is, so I'm actually even more intrigued now. I really don't care for the Chris Angel episode. To me, it's boring and not just fun to follow around Barry Bosquick's depressing character. Really don't care enough about him and his magician friends to make it worthwhile. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's a very middle-of-the-road episode. It's unfortunate because we're going to have, I think, one more, but then we're going to get back to really good story episodes. Okay, guys, thank you for your comments, and now we've got another good one. This is definitely a good episode, as far as I can remember. This is After School Special, so make sure you give me your guys' comments about that, and I will read those off in the next review. Otherwise, if you like the video, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next week. Thanks for watching the video. My name is Nitz, and you might remember me from the animated cult classic TV show, Undergrads. It's been a while, but I'm happy to say the click is finally getting back together in an all-new movie, thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign. But we are still asking for your support. To see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.